Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier. Today I'd like to bring a subject to you that I feel is important to highlight as more and more areas are built, and that is how things are marked or signed in the major locations. The video is also going to serve a very useful and fun secondary function, offering a tour in 4K of the main destinations in our current universe at the start of 3.9. Traveling all over the system to research took a significant part of two days to achieve. If you like the video, please consider supporting by sharing the link. Let's begin. Signage, if done right, should be seen mainly only to those who need it to get around. And by that I mean that they should blend into the environment. Honestly, so far this isn't really an issue in our universe. I feel the designers and artists have done a great job to build these locations and dress them with realism and function in mind. Some locations are vastly more congested or convoluted due to their faithful scale, allowing us to become properly immersed in the environment. They're difficult to navigate until you're familiar, and this is fine because it's how cities and locations work in reality, and it's part of exploration. So what I'm not suggesting is for more markings in the future, but continued thoughtful care to ensure that the location is usable. Too many signs in an area would make it look false just for the sake of it. Some more complex locations have maps on the walls that are actually functional and accurate. I did think that was a nice touch, by the way. It's also obvious that not all places can be marked the same, which makes so much sense as you're moving between entire planets. Corporations, governments, and outposts all have their own branding, along with construction style, condition, and state of repair. We should start our tour at the first place, which is Port Olisar. Port Olisar is currently located by the gas giant Crusader. Olisar has a very detailed lore, similar to other places, but I'm going to shy away from that and save it perhaps for another video. Port Olisar is a Spartan and functional location. It originally struck me as being one of the largest objects I've ever seen in a video game, but CIG has ensured that larger locations now make it seem very small. It's broken down into four ring-shaped quadrants with various sized landing pads. It's smaller in size, meaning that extreme signage may not be needed, but it was very well laid out and appropriate to the environment. Remember that this was the new player's only first spawning location for years, so it was right to make it easy to navigate. You can clearly see what quadrant you're in with the letter from A to D, a pad number, and the color. Interior and exterior signs help to guide so that you can get to the correct door and the corresponding pad. The somewhat airport look and feel is totally well suited to this location. SPK, or Security Port Korea, near Selen, is themed very similarly to Port Olisar, however it's much smaller and lacks the easy hatch. Despite its multiple level design and random airlock locations, its central room and ring design make it very easy to navigate. In the very early times for the PU, SPK offered a location to clear your crime stat, and there was also a mini-mission that brought an attacker and a defender together. Many streamers spent many hours just holding down SPK. Next, we'll move over to Grimhex at Yella. The Green Imperial Housing Exchange was a mining hub until it was abandoned. Since then, it's been overrun by criminals. Its interior is quite unique in that most of the original signage and infrastructure is in a state of extreme disrepair. The devs managed to use spray-painted markers in conjunction with repurposed signage to provide the right information. It's small touches like that that brings the universe to life and provides a unique character. As it's constructed inside a hollowed out asteroid, its interior has clear indication of rock walls and a true industrial feel. Its central part has a neon feel and you can really get the sense that its inhabitants have other things to worry about other than being clean. There are trade and ASOP terminals, a couple shops, and some habs. In the near future, the larger hangars that were concepted that are meant to be on the backside are going to be made functional. Be careful as some of the station lacks gravity, parts are without breathable atmosphere, and it's difficult to find as it's off the grid. Next is Levski on Delamar. This is primarily a trading hub carved into a surface mine. It's rough and dirty, almost being even more run down than Grimhex. Loose panels and wires all over, however, it's fairly small and well marked. When calling up your ship, pay attention to the pad that it's being delivered to as because like other locations, you're gonna need to enter that number into the elevator. If you forget, you can always go back to the terminal and look it up. When you first arrive, Levski may seem quite large, but it's actually quite difficult to get lost at. There's a surface garage if you want to go for a drive. Levski at night is surreal, and you should take great care when trying to land. Levski's well marked, offering habitation, Cafe Musan, a mission giver, the Grand Barter level, with shopping and trade. 
I find Lorville to be one of the least simple areas to navigate due to its multi-line transit system, but you're going to quickly get used to it and get around easy. It's the major port city of Hurston and can easily be seen all the way from orbit. The planet is corporation owned and operated with no consideration to pollution and no concern for the workers' quality of life. It's not a tourist destination, but it has everything that you would expect from a major city. For the first time visitor, you're going to need to rely on the various maps to make sense of the transit system. Pay attention to the color-coded signs that correspond to the destination. The various zones are well marked, however its many dead ends and levels are fun to explore. TISA spaceport is clearly identified upon approach, even at night, due to its distinctive holographic signs in a rectangular shaped pattern over the port. The corporate sector at the central station contrasts with the rest of the area with grand statues and polished marble everywhere. The rail line around the perimeter is dotted with garages if you'd like to go exploring by ground. Do plan to spend several hours exploring the location, including its shanty towns outside of the ring wall. Levesden Square is connected to the habitation unit and there are lounges and shops plus trade terminals. As I said, over time it becomes familiar and easy to navigate. Area 18 on Arcorp is the primary point of entry to those who wish to land on this planet-sized city. They are no-nonsense when it comes to order and security, but they do offer all the major shops selling weapons, clothing, armor, and ship parts. The area has a very Blade Runner or Ghost in the Shell feel that must be experienced in person at night. The Riker Memorial Spaceport is identifiable on approach as it's built in the shape of a giant Y. It's actually named after a Star Citizen fan who passed away in 2018. Arcorp is serviced by City Flight, who operate the transit service as free-to-use flying buses. Like Lorville, the area is very well marked, but still confusing due to its size and complexity. I strongly suggest putting at least two hours aside to explore this location if it's your first time. The three zones are clearly marked. You're going to find Cubby Blast, the TDD, Cassaba, G-Lock Bar, Space Hot Dogs, and the Hab Units. Zone 3 is where you'll find the Mission Giver Twitch. North IO is the tallest spire in the area at 172 stories, serving as the central corporate hub. The Bevic Convention Center opens near the end of the year to coincide with CitizenCon. When it's open, it has its own transit service, and this lets citizens get a sneak peek of soon-to-be-released ships. New Babbage International Spaceport can be seen as the main feature that's coming with Patch 3.9. The spaceport itself is set into the side of a mountain on the snow-covered surface of Microtech. Microtech Planet offers a very harsh backdrop to this upscale destination. The transit loop is very quick and simple to use. The signs posted are clean and deliberately themed to fit nicely with this location. Once you as a visitor understands that all the destinations are constructed within domes, it becomes very easy to find everything. The Aspire Grand is your home for the night and it can only be described as a hotel. The location is further broken down as the Spaceport, the Commons and the Promenade. The two domes are connected by the Skybridge. There are several garages giving you access to the surface, but be aware, you must dress for the environment or you'll succumb. You can really tell that the developers went into overdrive to ensure that this location has a very unique look and feel. It offers very specialized shops with food and drink that coincide nicely with the player actor system that was also added with patch 3.9. In the future, once the development progresses and we're able to choose a starting location, I believe that either Microtech or Area 18 are currently where I would choose. I'm going to quickly provide an overview of the recently added rest stops that orbit over the major planets. These procedurally generated destinations include the branding r, &R for Rest and Relax. They tend to offer what any traveler would need, including shops, service, and are generally just fun to explore. They tend to be placed at Lagrange points, and this adds a means for players to cover very long distances until and after refueling mechanics are added. They each share a similar look and feel, with clear markings to help you navigate to where you need to go. It took years of development for the tooling and assets, however, now the system is able to create unique stations to populate our universe as needed. The developers did mention that if a station is placed close to Terravin or Banu space, the look and feel might be adjusted to give it that extra cultural distinction. And that's it. As I said at the start, there are many more points of interest, wrecks, emerge shelters, and outposts throughout the system. My aim was to give you a visual tour with the key info and a bit of history, bringing us all the way from patch 2.0 to today. The video took a chunk of time to put together. If you like it, please support by sharing it. 
My goal is to grow the channel, and I can't do that without the help of citizens like you. Fly safe, and I'll see you in the verse.